And we are back here for our second episode of GNT Sports Talk on this Friday, January 11th. I'm Bobby Thompson. I'm Julian Gilardi. And joined by our good friend. Steven Houston, draft guru extraordinaire. <laughs> so, yeah, we're back with playoff football. We're going to break down the matchups now. On our old video, well, not old, but our previous video, we went over coaches, we went over our predictions for awards, so... Now we're on to the big stuff, the real games, yes, stuff that ha- that's here's, happened. Here's what we've all been waiting for. Yes, this is the big ticket. So, first matchup, we have the Colts traveling to the Chiefs. And there's a couple questions that our fans have. There's two about this game specifically. Who's going to have a better statistical game between Patty Mahomes and Andrew Luck? And then the second question is, will the Colts defense be able to do enough to limit Patty? So I want to see how you guys feel about both those questions. Steve, I want you to go first on this one, buddy. All right, so one question at a time or both? Okay, you could do... All right, let's just do one at a time, I guess. So Patty or uh, walk by the stats. One at a time, time, question being, who's going to do better statistically, Patty or Luck? Yes. It's got to be Patty. Yes, I, I, agree. I agree. I think that's we're three for three on that one. And then the second question is, Will the Colts defense be able to do enough to limit Patty? It's not that it's not just the Colts defense is going to do it. I think it's going to be the Colts run game versus the run defense. That's a, that's a very good that's, point. That's a good that's a good way to look at it. That's is a very interesting so because that chews up the clock that keeps them off the field. So the defense will have to do less if that was happening. That's a very good way to spin it. I like I, that. I, if, I, if I had to say, I think, that, I think that Andy is going to acknowledge that Patty Mahomes is just something special. And they're going to reduce the opportunities he's going to have to get the ball. And I think that they know that Kansas City is going to struggle to stop the run. Oh, yeah, Whether no doubt. Naheem Hines, whoever it be. They are going to keep the ball out of Patty's hands, run the clock as best they can. Yeah, I actually think this is a great spot for Marlon Mack. I am actually might play uh, um, DraftKings tomorrow for the last time, and I'm putting Mack in my lineup. I think he's a great value. I think yeah, he's going to have a great time. You're going to play it every week. No, I haven't been doing it every week, but the thing is that next week it gets hard because there's only two games, so you basically have to be perfect. This is like the last legitimate one, kind of. Bobby, what do you think about this one? Well, for the first question, who's going to have a better game? I do believe it's Patty Mahomes, of course. He's home. He's um, he's playing in a hot crowd, of course. And, you know, and the statistic is they really don't do well home in the playoffs. We've seen that, and I think that might change this week. But I think Patty Mahomes is going to be that reason. But, um... To go on to the second question, I do agree with you, Steve. I think that it's about the run defense, the the run defense, excuse me, the running game against the Chiefs. Because if the Colts run the ball like they did against the Texans, the Chiefs are in for a long night. Yeah. And that, also, yeah. do I think that the Colts can make some plays on defense? I do. I think their defense is a little bit underrated. You saw that um, the Texans really, really struggled to to move the ball on them. And also, that's a, another reason is because that receiving core was so hobbled. Kiki QT and, and New Hopkins really did Texans have a nice struggled game. in the red zone. The oh. Texans struggled bad in the red zone. Oh, yeah, they were horrible. They just they came out so flat for a playoff game, so uninspired. Like, they just didn't look ready to play at all. The Colts just took it to them, and they never recovered. So, in that game, since you brought that game back up, let's go over what Luck and everyone did. So... Luck had, what's, he threw for 222 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. Nothing's too crazy, but efficient. Marlon, he was 19-32. Marlon Mack was the beast for them. 148 yards rushing and a touchdown. T.Y. Hill in that five grabs for 85 yards, doing what he does. Ebron with another touchdown. He's been scoring all year. And then Inman made a nice, had a nice game with a touchdown. Four catches and 53 yards. He might be the X factor for the Colts. We, we, we real, real quick talk about how good the and this is where it's, I mean, Andrew Luck is outstanding. But what really changed is their offensive line. Yes. Andrew Watt, yes. Quentin yes. Nelson and the way he handled 
when he got to Damien Clowney, I don't know if you've seen the videos. Whenever there was a video of Jadavian Clowney on Quentin Nelson, Jadavian Clowney got pushed out of the screen. Yeah, he did. Quentin Nelson was balling. Quentin Nelson, oh, Nelson ate his lunch. Yeah, Quentin Nelson was even eating up water a little bit, too. It was crazy. Like, he was killing it. But, yeah, over Clowney, that was key. He was dominating Clowney. So, yeah, the Colts... See, I was actually going to say, the Colts' offensive line, to me, is the best line in the playoffs. Yes, it is. Because that, that's actually another question we got to tie everything in. Scott, a good contributor for our hockey show, asked who we think the best offensive line in the playoffs is and the best defensive line. Offensive, I'm going Colts. So you actually put me on to that. You led me right into that point. Uh, it, it is the Colts. I think it is the Colts, but I don't think it's... By a ton, I, th- I, th- I think that the uh, I, know, I know it sounds nuts, but I, I, I think that the Chargers have a fantastic offense a lot. And I was I still think pro- yeah. quite on the same quite on the same level as the uh, as the Colts, but there's some good offensive lines here. And also, also I think the um, Saints. Have a fantastic offensive line. Yeah, they do. I I think those and Cowboys still their line's still really good. Obviously, but I think Colts with Quentin Nelson, he's really solidified them. That's the best offensive line to me. And defensive line, I'm going Chargers all day with Bosa and Ingram. I can't deny those two. That's got to be my best. That's got to be my best defensive line for sure. Bobby, what do you think? I think that. Um the offensive line of the <clears throat> well statistically the the Colts offensive line is the best since they've only allowed 18 sacks this season. Yes, that's definitely and what that's I was few, pointing to. That's the fewest the Colts have ever let up since 2010, but I um I do agree. I think the Chargers have a very underrated offensive line. I think Dallas still has a pretty good offensive line. Of course. And um uh, the Saints, I agree with you, Steve. The Saints' offensive line is very good, and they really invested into that offensive line. But the Colts' def- offensive line, Quentin Nelson, was a huge piece. I think that was one of the best draft picks we've seen this year and in a very long time. So, Bobby, Bobby can, I, can, I, uh, can I ask you a question, Bobby? Uh, absolutely. What do, think, what do you think about uh, – so, so obviously the rate of sacks and quarterback hits on Andrew Luck have been diminished. Obviously, they've improved a lot. But how much of that do you think is Andrew Luck playing more like a natural pocket quarterback versus this semi mo I mean, I mean, the man – would run prior to his injuries. The man would run a lot. How much influence do you think that has on the Chiefs, or Chiefs, excuse me, the cult success by him, you know, kind of not throwing himself out there? Do you think it's a big part of it? Yeah, I do. I think that him, I think he changed the way he plays. I still do think that when when he takes off and runs, he needs to slide instead of trying to, you know, dive and he takes these hits. But I will, I will say, however, that I think that him being a much better, he's playing a lot better this year. I think the offensive line, he's helping the offensive line at just as much as they are helping him. So, in a way, I think that they all contribute the same to the same way. I think that him basically being in the pocket, you know, getting the ball out quicker, really helps as well. That's so, huge. I don't think he holds on to the ball that much, and he get. I think they really. Yes. Uh, Frank Wright got in the game plan and basically changed it so to protect uh-huh. the, the the franchise, and that's Andrew Luck. Bobby, that's outstanding. I love everything you just said, and you honestly highlighted why Frank Wright's my coach of the year because he's turned around the whole offensive philosophy. Andrew Luck gets rid of the ball quickly. He doesn't hold on to it anymore. He used to hold it for too long, and he's not running as much. Like, what is Andrew Luck got a or Andrew Luck got a throw to? He's got fucking T-Y. Eric Ebron, who is a, honestly we talked about comeback player of the year in the last podcast. But how about Andrew Ebron or Eric Ebron as a uh, comeback player? I get, That's know, a dark yeah. horse candidate too. I mean, he had he has like he had thirteen touchdowns. He's been a great target. He's, he's looked. I'm loving it. He's, he's been, yeah, he's, he's been had, killing it, dude. I, I, 
Um, pardon me if this stat is incorrect. I recently read it, but I, I didn't verify the source. But I believe that he had 14 targets in the red zone, 13 of which were touchdowns. That's crazy, but I think but, you're right, honestly, because... That is true, and again, I, 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 I don't want to like like guarantee that that's true, but... If that's if that is exactly how it is, I mean, that's nuts. Yeah, that really. I, yeah, like I'm but not between, sure. If the, but between LeBron in the end zone and T.Y. Hill in the twenties, who's he had to throw? Chester fucking Ru- freaking Rogers. Yeah, it's on show and man, like I just talked about before. Yeah, no one too impressive. That's a need the Colts have in the offseason. Get someone that can run with T.Y. Get a nice number two wide receiver. That'd be Don't good for Le'Veon. them. No, stop with Le'Veon. Le'Veon belongs to me. But, um, anyway. But it's, but it's extremely impressive what Andrew Luck has done. Oh, yeah, Luck's been a, he's been a beast, dude. And, and you know, yeah, they talk, you know, you know I, I think that Mahomes is an absolute animal. But look at the weapons he has to work with versus exactly. what Andrew Luck has Yeah, yeah it is interesting. When so, you have Tyreek Hill, you know. It's, you know and uh, Travis Kelsey, obviously, and Hunt before everything happened. So that was a listen, nice three hit monster. I, I can't throw more than 40 yards. But if I had a better arm strength, I could put a blindfold on <laughs> and shot right up in the air as far as I could. And I bet you I'd have a great touchdown percentage <laughs> if I had time to kill for my water cheapest. Yeah, you could just pull a bird box, throw a, bl- throw a blindfold yeah. in. That seems to be ah! trending now. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so I got a bird box reference in. <laughs> now let's get back to this game. I so. So Colts, yeah, we're gonna go through it now. I'm gonna I'm gonna break some stuff down. So Chiefs are twelve and four. Colts are, I believe, eleven and six now. If you count that playoff win, and now the Chiefs are a five and a half point favorite. They're four and four against the spread at home. The Colts are six and three against the spread. Another on the road, which is really impressive. Another nugget here that's been highlighted on this page. And I wrote it down. Patty and Walk have combined for 89 touchdown passes. That's the most in NFL history for any two quarterbacks in the playoff game. So we're going to see something special when we see that game tomorrow. That's yes, we will. Yeah, so... Bobby, what do you think? I, who do, are you asking me who I think is going to win? I think so. Yeah, but, like, who do you got, brother? I'm going with the Colts. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow your roll. Slow your roll. Chiefs, baby. Arrowhead. I know they haven't won in 25 years. I know Andy Reid's 0-2 at Arrowhead. Going to get both those things out of the way. And they're going to kill those demons tomorrow. I picked the Chiefs to go to the Super Bowl, win it. So I'm not backing down now. Chiefs all day. Oh, young. Make you real mad. I also was thinking Colts. Really? Whoa, you too? You're my homes guy. I can't believe this. Look. Holy yeah, wow! Man. Oh my God! All right then. So I guess I gotta argue for the Chiefs. All right, you guys can oh, go. No, 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 hit us with it. Hit us. Hit us. All right. So the Chiefs are ranked first in offense. They've scored thirty-five points this year, and I think the Colts' defense is very good. It is. They rank uh, ten total, so it's gonna be a stiff test. But I think that the Colts, the Chiefs, are... defense rank what? What happened? What did you say about Chiefs defense? No, the Chiefs defense is pretty rough. I mean, they rank 24 total. They 27 against the run and 31st against the pass. So, Paddy's going to have to win. That seems like that would be a problem. It, yes, it is. But Paddy's going to win another shootout. Here's my thing. The Chiefs are rested. I know the Colts are hot. Andy Reid plays well with those bye weeks. You ever, you guys both know that. And but, I think... Uh, but, but, how, I mean, but listen, listen. After they put up... What, say 21 in the first half with zero scored by the Texans? You know, I feel like, I feel like, all right, you didn't get bye week, but Indianapolis got plenty of time to kill last week. Yeah, they did. I get what you're saying, but. I think the Arrowheads is a different animal in the playoffs. I know they haven't played well there, but and I think the weather might be the weather might be a factor. And I think the Chiefs are more ready for that. They're they're used to the conditions. The Colts are more of a dome team. I know they can run it well, but I expect Damian Williams to step up. I think Mahomes will create some plays for him once he gets the passing game going, and then he can go up to play action. And I think that I'm expecting that. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the Colts cover the spread. I think they'll cover, but the Chiefs are going to win this. 
It's five and a half. I think the Colts will cover. But I think oh, yeah. I think the Chiefs win it, though. I'm going 30-27 Chiefs. All right. Okay. Bobby, what do you think? All right. So, all right. So, here's here's my rundown. So, basically, I'll give you a little stat. The Kansas City Chiefs this year, they're 2-4 and four against teams who've made the playoffs this year. They're 10-0 and 0 against teams that haven't. So Interesting. Think, okay. So, we're going to leave that up here. Another factor is this. Andy Reid just can't win the big game. I feel this is a huge game because... Then, if they win, next week they got an AFC Championship game at, at home. So yeah, that'll be cool. This is, this is really a big test. And listen, the, the Colts are no slap dick team. They are I didn't what say they are. They're not. They're not. They are a very good, underrated team. Defensively, they're a bit raw, but they, I feel, can get pressure on Patty Mahomes. I feel like Whoa. they can force okay. him All to right. really force some turnovers. Uh, I feel oh. that, you know what, Andrew Luck is, listen... I think that that offensive line is going to limit Justin Houston, D. Ford, and company. Oh. I think with the injury to Eric Berry, if he plays, you know, that's a big, you know, they change the defense around because they have yeah. a feeling that he won't play. I think that's that's uh, a big loss. Speaking of Berry, are there any other injuries we need to know about besides Eric Berry? What's going uh, on with Andy? Walk, Sammy Watkins is questionable. That's basically all I know. Watkins, but on the, Watkins, Watkins and Ware should play. Yeah, that's what I heard too. I, the Colts, I think T.Y. and maybe someone else, but I think they're all playing. They're all playing, though. I don't think Watkins and Ware playing is all that relevant. No, I it's not. Play. I agree with you. I'm not using those two for my argument. I think the Chiefs get it done. I think that Justin Houston and Ford will step up. I think they're going to find a way through. I think they'll be pumped up. The defense, I think, will play better than it has. It's a playoff game. They know what they have to do. They've had time to prepare to rest it. I think the Eric Berry thing isn't as big as you guys think it is. Because he hasn't been there all year, really. And there's, I mean, their defense has been rough, but they still win despite that most of the time. It's not That's good. my argument. Just let me put it to this way. Andrew, Andrew, I don't know. I, uh, I mean, I, I'm picking the Colts, but I'm picking them in a goddamn close game. And I know uh, there's a very strong chance I'm wrong. But I hope so. I, <laughs> that there is, I don't know, I, I, I think that the Andrew, Andrew Luck is going to eat. I think that defense is so lost in the middle and in the secondary. The only concern I have is that the Chiefs defensive line is nasty. The Chiefs defensive line with Chris Jones is so fucking good. Freaking good. Part of my language. Yeah, it's, I got you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think those guys wake up. I think they're going to be pumped up. You know how Arrowhead gets. And this is for Andy <laughs> Reid. This is Reid. I'm going to tell you right now. This is about Andy Reid's legacy to me. If he comes up short again, you really have to start to question him. This is set up for him to go to the Super Bowl. Come on, Andy. Mm-hmm. Let's go. We're ready. Uh, I don't... I, I, so, so, two things. I, I, a, I don't disagree. I don't agree with that at all. So I think that when you have Pat Mahomes on a rookie contract... Andy Reid's legacy is tied to the extent that Pat Mahomes is with Kansas City. Interesting. He's got some. His legacy is he's got plenty of room. At the end of the day, this is the first full season that Pat Mahomes is going to be quarterback. I understand. That That being said, I think that this game does not come down to Pat Mahomes' arm. I don't think it comes down to the secondary. Anyone? I think it comes down the trenches. Okay. Chris Jones and the Kansas City defensive line beat the nasty Ryan Kelly, Quentin Nelson uh, offensive line. And, and I, I, it's going to be tough. It's going to be a grudge match. And there's going to be a lot of play. I don't think there's going to be many sacks. But my, mm. my thought is that they will be able to hold off enough sacks to give Andrew Luck enough time to make the right passes. The Kansas City run defense is weak. Marlon Mack has been a surprise. He's been fantastic. I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be low scoring, way low scoring than anyone would have thought. Interesting. Um, I, I, I give it to the Colts, and I give it to the under. And, okay, what's your score? What do you have them winning by? Oh, what's the under? I, can you, do you know the other Yes, over under? it's around 56 points. So the way I had it would be just over because I had it 30-27. What, so what are you thinking? Give me 30-27. 
Give me 28-21. Interesting. Okay. So that's a different take, Bobby. What do you? How do you feel no, the score is no. going to play out? I'm going to go with uh, 31-28 Colts, and it's Adam Vinatieri kicking them to the AFC Championship. Oh game. my God! Please no, not for Vinatieri. Uh, I hope you guys are both wrong, and I know Tex kind of hopes he's wrong too because he. I know he's still a patty guy, but hey, we'll see. It's a but, tough yeah, matchup. I'm a, I'm a huge, I'm a huge Chiefs fan. Y'all know this. Exactly, exactly. That's why I was surprised you went Colts, but you're just looking at the facts, so I can't no, fault I'm, you. I, I, I'm, playing, I'm playing this as a better. I'm not playing this as a. Uh, I'm not playing as a fancy guy. All right, I feel that. I took Chiefs, so I'll, we'll see how that goes. And another interesting question. We're gonna move on to the next game, but this pertains to all of them, actually. Someone asked me, what quarterback's under the most pressure out of all eight to get the win this weekend? Who do you guys have? I have an answer. I want you guys to go first, though, and see if we match. No, so most pressure yes, to win? Yes, there are eight quarterbacks. Which one has the most on them, you think? Uh, can I give two? Because I'm really tight with two. Yeah, you could give two. Give one A, one B. Sure. All right, so, so one A is Philip Rivers. Basically, just because of the time constraint. Right. He's 37, 38, so I'm actually not sure how old he is, but he, he is not young. Right. His win not was close. The other one is Jared Goff. Yes, I like I like both of those, honestly. Cause I really think that, you know, you, you see all these coaching hiring, and, and, and fucking sh- freaking Sean McVay is this, like, quarterback guru that everyone wants to emulate, and everyone wants to... Get a touch of you know, Sean McVay's gardener is going to get a assistant <laughs> coaching. I know. Me and Bobby were joking before. Like everyone wants a piece of McVay. I mean, two guys had a cup of coffee with McVay, and now they're head coaches. That's the world we live in now. And these a thirty-two, a thirty-two-year-old, a thirty-two-year-old now has a coaching tree. What happens to the narrative? If he loses yeah. against the Cowboys. Yeah, I agree. When we'll get to that game. That actually is the game we're going into right now, so it's a good transition. So, uh, so Bobby, Bobby what, do you, what, do you, what do you have as your coach with the most of most to lose? Quarterback. Uh, or quarterback, excuse me. You're good. It's Phil Rivers. I think it's, okay. make, I think it's make or break for him. I, th- I think you're... You know, he hasn't really made it to the postseason a lot, but when he has, you know, he's made it to an AFC Championship game before. But it really comes down to this. This year, if you, with this team, if you cannot win and you get knocked out this week by the Patriots, they really need, I, in my opinion, I think they really need to think about that quarterback position in Los Angeles. Whoa, wow. But, That's a really Bobo, hot take. That's a blazing Bobo. hot take. Bobo, Bobo. So when, when you talk about that Wait, and you look back at the history of – that team where they had like what is it fourteen and two when they had the two thousand six I remember it was yeah. yesterday. Like, like, how much how much blame? Okay, so I understand that, that, that this is a lot riding on Philip Rivers. How much blame do you put on the Chargers front office? I put so many well, I think that, got done. I think the Chargers front office has always been a little shaky, but yeah, I feel personally that. Um, you know, that loss in 06 definitely is not him. However, um, I think the Patriots beat them more than he could have. I think the Patriots won that game than the Chargers losing it. So, yeah. Give or take. So, I feel, but listen, in 2007, they made it to the AFC Championship game. They were all, they were in it. They played great in that game. They lost 21-12. to but other than that, they really don't make the playoffs. They've always been one and done. This year has been different. You know, they they, they won their game. They, they they beat the Ravens. They lost to the Ravens. They went in. They beat, um what's his name, Lamar Jackson. Yeah. They got it done on the road. They're on the road again against, one of, against the standard in the NFL, the New England Patriots. And what better way, you know, to go into Foxborough, their home, where they're, by the way, they're 8 0 this year, and where they don't lose in the playoffs, very rarely they do at home, and dethrone the de- reigning, defending, undisputed AFC champions. So I think that, and I think Philip Rivers has a lot of pressure on him right now. And it's really going to be something to watch to see how he handles that pressure. 
Yes, guys, you guys hit it, both of you. I'm on Philip Rivers all day. That was my choice. I'm happy you guys matched with me. It's got to be. I mean, he's old. His clock's ticking. This is the best team he's ever had, potentially. Even could be better than that 14-2 team, even. I'll go as far as to say that. And they've been road dogs this year. They've been road warriors this year. They're 7-1. They're 7-1. They're, they're What's well, up? If, if, uh, something after Philip, obviously we all agree on Philip Rivers has got the most to lose. He'll be your number two. I think you might have been right with golf, too. Golf is right there with me. And I'm going to surprise you with another one. How about Drew Brees? Everything's set for the Saints. If they have, if he loses to the Eagles, like, you can't. I don't know how he lived oh, that down. God, I'm tall at the Eagles. Win. God help me. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that one. That's our last one. But, yes, oh, yeah, Philip Rivers, we're all in agreement. He has the most to lose by far. And let's see what he can do on Sunday. So we're going to go on to the next game. We got the Cowboys and the Rams. The Rams are a seven-point favorite at home, and they're thirteen and three. Cowboys eleven and six. Background three, three and two at home against the spread. Cowboys four and four against the spread. Now here's the thing: here, how many fans of the Cowboys are going to travel to Los Angeles? Because it seems like that stadium may have a lot of Dallas fans in there. Could that be an issue for the Rams? What do you guys think? I I. Uh, I'll say I think that Dallas fans are everywhere. I think that they're gonna travel to LA. You're gonna ha you're gonna see there's gonna be a big Dallas fan base. But I also think that um, I think that the Coliseum is gonna be filled with uh, Ram a lot of Rams fans. But but I think that at least twenty five percent of the fans will be from will be Dallas. They they, they oh, yeah. follow their team. Oh yeah, oh so. yeah, I agree. We'll so, Dallas, Dallas travels well. At the end of the day, I don't care who fills the stadium. It's it's not a stadium that has that home field yep. feel, like well, vibe. Like you don't get shook when you play there. Like the Falcons rolled in, they got that dub no problem last year, and a lot of teams can do that. I mean, there's not really like a crazy home field. You're right. The time difference. All that matters is if you're traveling from like East Coast to West Coast, get the home, you know, the home field advantage because everyone else is freaking tired. Right. But, you know, we're not talking about something like that. You know, I, I really don't think that it really matters that much. Yeah, I feel you with that. So let's recap what happened with the Cowboys quickly. The Cowboys got the win 24-22. The score was a lot closer than the game. I mean, the game was a lot less close than the score would indicate. There we go. That's what I meant to say. So Dak was basically his at normal self, 22-33, 226, one touchdown, one pick. He also ran for 29 yards and a touchdown. Dak played a great game. Yeah, he did what he he played his game when they win, you know, like he he made his throws, he had a touchdown passing, rushing, very, very, very good stuff from Dak. Elliot was the Elliot was key, 137 a touchdown, also caught four for thirty-two. And then Cooper has been a great pickup, and they that was well worth the first round pick. Seven catches, yeah, 106 right. yards. So I the Cowboys should get all I finally acknowledge that the Cooper trade was not a bad trade. Oh, I've acknowledged that weeks ago. I totally agree. That was a home run for it's, Dallas. It's been a steal. It's been the. It's been a huge factor. Like, oh, like they way overpaid. Oh, the guy was super talented. You just misused, and Dallas was smart enough to recognize yeah. that hey, you mis misused this way. We're gonna use him right. Yeah, now, he was. No yes, problem. he was trapped and, in a bad situation, like you said. Yeah. But the problem is that Dallas does not have the quarterback to use him to his fullest abilities. Right, but right. They can use him well enough to open up the fields for Zeke, for Jarwin, for Gallup, for et cetera, et cetera. You know, he, he still yeah, I also so think they're going to, yeah. Not. Yeah, I agree. That Alan Hearns injury was ugly. I think Cole Beasley's uh -huh. a little banged up and... um. The other thing is, I, I believe Tavon Austin's going to be back against his old team. Could he? Could they have something for the Rams with Tavon Austin? Maybe he's going to be a field stretcher. It's just what what is what is the purpose of a field stretcher when the defense has zero fear that the quarterback is going to be able to hit him deep? Right, uh, that's a great point. How often have you seen Michael Gallup open on a deep throw by Dak that Dak couldn't hit? 
Yeah, I mean, you see it all the time. He whips on those throws. That's why he's not upper echelon to me. He's an above average quarterback, obviously. I think he's in that middle range somewhere, but he's not in that elite status for the reason you just said. Oh. You know? Yeah. So let's break this down by the numbers a little bit. Here's where I think that the, ca the Rams are in trouble. First of all, they give up five yards a carry. And their defense ranks 23rd against the rush, which is going to be a huge issue with the Cowboys. Cowboys rank 10th in rushing with 123 yards. Honestly, I would expect that to be more, a little bit lower than you would think for Dallas. But that is going to be the big factor. I also think that Dominic and Sue is better footballs behind him. I don't really see the impact he's been making. It really seems to be Aaron Donald because how are you giving up five yards a carry? That has to fall on Sue a little bit to me. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, I think that Dallas, their strength is definitely running the football with Zeke Elliott. And yeah. The Rams' defense, and we could talk about this, the Rams' defense isn't definitely what it was, what we all thought it was going to be. Not even, not even year. close, not even close. And they ranked, I believe, 24 total defense, and... No, 20th, and they give up 24 a game. There we go. So they rank 20th in defense. But, 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 Julio, how much of that comes from the fact that uh, Los Angeles is constantly scoring? Like, like, the ball is going to go right back to them. That's true. You know? That's true. But they can be doing better, though. Like, these numbers aren't great anywhere. I mean, the best thing they have are 14th against the pass. That's the best stat I have for them. You know? Like, I get what you're saying, though, like, to some degree, but that can't be everything. So, so what do y'all think happens this game? All right. So I will say this. I'm I'm gonna say there's a difference maker on the defense for the Rams, and his name is Akeem Talib. Because here's a staff for you: the Rams defense ha allowed only 17.3 points per game when Akeem Talib is on the field. When he's not on the field, they allow 30.8 points per game. So interesting. Listen, Listen, I think that's a big factor. And look, we all know that Dak is not going to kill them with his arm. No, I'm that not saying he's that He's going to keep the plays alive, and he's going to try to get the ball to Cooper and Elliott and Cole Beasley as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, but look, here's the here's the game. Here's the, uh, the synopsis here. I'm going to say, look, the Rams are home. Aaron Donald's playing. He's healthy. Nadama Kitsu is still there. He's healthy. That defensive line of the Rams, I think, is going to give the offensive line of the Cowboys some trouble. And I think that Jared Goff does just enough to win. And I think this is a Todd Gurley game. He's get, he's ready to go. He's going to run all over the place. But this defense of the Cowboys is underrated. Those yes, linebackers yes, with yes, Jalen yes, Smith, yes. Sean Lee, and Van Der Esch, Van Der Esch yes. are scary. That's They're a great young, trio. Fresh, and when... <clears throat> And they are making plays. So you got to stack the box if you're the Cowboys to stop Gurley and make Jared Goff beat you with his arm. Yes, but, you're right. But if you do that, that, that's asking for trouble as well because he's got Brandon Cooks, he's got Robert Woods, he's got Everett, he's got Higby, he's Reynolds. got Reynolds. If they, had, if they had Cooper Cup, they would be in more trouble. But yes. all in all, here's my thing, Steve, Julian. Here's, all, here's my all in all. I think that the Rams are going to get this done. But I think they're going to win 31 to 30. Wow, you're really calling for a nail biter. They'll be biting their nails if that's the case. Okay, um, Steve, who do you got? I have the Cowboys. Okay. I have the Cowboys. I have, for a couple of reasons, um, the number one reason is that I think that there was an issue with Jared Goff when he was a cow. It was extraordinarily apparent. When he was a rookie, but obviously you could blame that on some Jeff Fisher. Right. But you recently saw it with games towards the end of the season, particularly the Bears game. Jared Goff's footwork and mechanics collapse when he's under pressure. Interesting. And I absolutely think that Dallas is going to be able to bring pressure on him. Yeah, now, I, I think mean, it's going to be close. I think it's going to be close. So the Dallas breaks defense. But I think I think that the quality of Dallas's defense is outmatched by the quality of the offense overall of uh, the Rams. But at the same time, I think that there's going to be enough hassle. There's going to be enough 
crucial drives that get stopped by key sacks or key sacks. If I am Dallas, I let Todd Gurley beat me. Let the team run through Todd Gurley. Hmm. That's an interesting way to put it because I was looking at the other way. How often do teams get beat? No, I know that people say, oh, well, if someone runs 25 times in a game, they will win. No, but that's that's, that's, a bias. But if you truly let Todd Gurley just run up, let my middle and my secondary stop him and focus my front line and my edge rushers on Jared Goff and make him uncomfortable. Hmm. Force them to run the ball with me. Okay, I well, think, hold I on. think you stop. I, I, I don't think it's going to be... I, I think it's going to be an ugly game. But I, I think that Dallas will beat them. Interesting. So what's your score? <sighs> 24-17, Dallas. Wow. If they stifle the Rams like that, that would really be a bad look on McVay and all the new coaches that just got hired because they had a cup of coffee with him. So, here's the thing. But it happened before. It's happened before. No, 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 no. Here's the thing. That offense can get stopped. And if you look at when that offense gets stopped, it's when Jared Goff is under extreme pressure and makes bad decisions. And he's going to make bad decisions in this game. And you know who's going to be the MVP of this game? It's going to be Demarcus Lawrence. Demarcus Lawrence, my boy. I hype him up all the time. I hope the Jets sign him. I hope so, man. I really hope so. I mean, I like Lawrence a lot. And you know what? I'm with you. I'm riding the Dallas Cowboys, too. I like some of the stuff you said, but... My thing is, I think they're going to be able to limit Todd Gurley. This defense only gives up 95 yards a game to running backs. You saw what they did to the Seahawks rushing attack. They stifled it. They went nowhere. Julio, Julio, is that Dallas defense not one of the most underrated defenses in the league? Yeah, they definitely are. I agree. They're sixth in the league. And against the pass, they're third team, too. There's no area they're weak in. I mean, and they really stuff the run. If they can stuff Todd Gurley and make Jared Goff beat them, he won't be able to do it. I agree with you. I think the Cowboys will get this done. Yeah, I think Elliott's going to have a huge day because they can't stop the run. And I think Dak's going to hit a couple key throws. It's all about Elliott. I, I love Cooper. I love Cooper. I think Cooper is amazing. I think he's done amazing things for Dallas. Not because of necessarily, I mean, obviously, like, his monster game with the Eagles was fantastic and shit, but I don't necessarily think that the Dak Cooper thing is going to win the game. It's just that they are going to open up so much for Elliott. Yes. And give, me, give me, I want to say 200 yards for Elliott. I was going to say, like, one, I was thinking. I'm going to say 150 plus. I like that. I like that. I was going to put him at 150. I was going to say 150 and two touchdowns for Elliott. And I think that Cooper gets a touchdown as well. I think that Dallas gets this done. I'm going to peg like a, I'm going to say a 27, 24 type deal. I think that's how they win it. All right. I like it. So Dallas doing 27, 24. Yep. That's what I have. I don't know what the over under is. All right. All right. So we'll go to the next game. And this is a this is a big one for Bobby, and I want I'm really interested to see where you sit because we know where we sit. So Chargers Patriots, the Chargers are eight and one against the spread on the road, and they're four and a half point dog, four point underdogs. The Patriots are six and two against the spread, and they're eight and zero. Oh, like Bobby said, they're on being at home. Rivers is zero seven against Brady. He's five and five in the playoffs. I'm getting all the bad stats out of the way now because I think the Chargers will get this done. You want me to go? You want Steve? Well, Steve, who do you have? (sighs) I have. Oh God, I hate it so much. I hate to say this. I have the Patriots. Okay, well that's fair. I don't like it. I don't want it. I don't. I understand why you would. It makes all the sense in the world. So go ahead. Why? Why do you have them? I want you and Bobby. Let me know. I, I I don't have the S in front of me. So you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I had recently looked at a stat line of Philip Rivers versus Tom Brady. Oh, and seven. Yeah, he's zero and seven. Yeah. Basically, basically, the only time that um, Philip Rivers beats the Patriots. 
Patriots is when Matt Castle's the quarterback. Oh, God. Or whatever other shitty non Tom Like Brissette or like anyone else, whoever they had. Like, okay. I, all right, so what uh, else? And I, I just think that I really like what Philip Rivers has going from. I love Philip Rivers. I like I him a lot, too. Tom, I love how they have, but with Melvin going hurt. That's a factor. With, the classic Belichick turning it on towards the post. I think it'll be a close game. I oh, think yeah. Close. I agree. I think it's going to go down to the last two minutes or so. But I got to go Patriots. And I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. But <laughs> I, I, I got All right, brother. Give us your synopsis and how you see it. Well, okay. This is your listen, time to shine. Go ahead. Listen. The Patriots are playing a home divisional game once again. It seems to be coming uh, more. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Enough. I'm so sick of them. Uh. Keep going, keep going. So, go listen, ahead, go ahead. Listen to me. Tom Brady against Phil Rivers is 0 7. That's, a, that's something to look forward to. That's, that's what well, you mean the other step. way? Brady's undefeated. Yes, I'm. Tom Brady against Phil Rivers is undefeated. He, he's 7 and up. Yeah. So and Bill Belichick, let's talk about this against coaches in their first postseason. He's six and one, and what was the only loss? The last Super Bowl they were in to Doug Peterson. So oh, wow. I'm gonna go with this right now. I don't bet against my team. I'm going with my team, of course, and here's why. First of all, to, uh, over the weekend in Foxborough, it's gonna be a bit chilly out there, and I don't think teams from the West Coast really like doing that, do they? So listen, it's I think. Not the, just, it's not just the West Coast team coming there, but it's a West Coast team coming there to play at one o'clock. Yeah, and, and they did that last week at one o'clock, which is, I think, a little questionable on the NFL scheduling to fucking to, to freaking make the uh, um, you know the San Diego Chargers come out there, Los Angeles Chargers, pardon me, come <laughs> out okay. there. And, I'm sorry, I, I I'm a San Diego man. Yeah, I still call them that all the time, but I agree, man. That is some questionable scheduling. Why do they have to do it that exactly? Well, they should at least be able to play the 4 o'clock game yeah. or the Saturday night game. Or put them to Sunday, even. Like, I don't understand why they made them do it like that, but, you know, but I think they're... But at the same time, what, 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 what do you say about the Chargers going back to California and then coming back? Yeah, that's they shouldn't have done that. I said the same thing. They should have just stayed in the East Coast. I don't understand why they went back. But honestly, I think Blaine will have this team ready to play. I think they'll get it done. It's going to be a grind it out type of game. I think it'll be low scoring, maybe less scoring than people think. Okay, so I'll go over it. Rivers, was he did what he had to. It wasn't pretty. So the, they won I'm it 20. The, I'm, I'm taking the over. They won it 23-17. to 17. Rivers was 22 with 32 for 160. He basically did what he had to, and nothing more, obviously. But his QBR was pretty high, so he played well. Gordon had 40 oh, yards. You know what the Uber is on this game? Yeah, I'm actually looking right now as we go through that. I just wanted to recap how the Chargers did quickly. It will be Gordon had 40 and a touchdown. Allen had four catches for 37, and. Mike Williams had two for 42. Gates had four for 35. There was only one touchdown. Bagley from the U was critical. He was the MVP. Five out of six. He hit big field goals, and they needed every one of them to get to win. So here's the over-under. We're looking at 47 and a half for the over-under. I like the under in this situation. Bobby, what do you think? I think that... I'll tell you this. Because the weather, that, that's why I'm feeling the answer. I think, I think this game, you're going to see the Chargers really struggle covering Julian Edelman. And I think that, okay. you know what, I'm going to say this. I think this is a big James White day. You're going to see hmm. him really, really go off. Because I will tell you this, this the I almost just did it too. The <laughs> we all, we Angeles, all do it. <laughs> the Los Angeles Chargers have one weakness on defense. And can I tell you guys what it is? It's against pass-catching running backs. They have allowed mm. 973 yards to running backs wow. when they go out of the backfield and catch the ball. That's a lot. That is the Patriots' strength. Tom Brady loves those checkdowns to James White and Rex Burkhead. And so, and then they're going to have to run the football. they got to get Sony Michelle involved early. And then in the red zone, get the ball to Gronkowski, please. Mm. I'm ta- Listen, I know Gronk isn't what he is, what he used to be. Give him yeah. some looks in the red zone. Get him some opportunities where he's one-on-one and get him the ball. 
Mid, he's going up against Derwin James. Derwin James is this not is that's the matchup. Before. That's the matchup to watch, in my opinion. Derwin James versus Gronkowski. Highlight that. Circle that. That's going to be the key to this football game, in my opinion. What Gronk are we getting? Well, no, 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 no. What happened? Gronkowski is going to make a peep. Oh, you think he's going to get shut out? I don't think he's going to get shut out. I think he's going to shut himself out. Hmm, interesting. So, 47 catches, only 682 and three touchdowns. It's worst season since his rookie year. So, what do you mean by that exactly? You just think, like, they're not going to look at him that much? Or you think, like, he'll be covered well? Like, what are you implying exactly? No, I think that, that, that Gronkowski is a much... I, I, I think that Gronkowski is a Hall of Fame, outstanding, amazing tight end who has hit a wall. Yeah, and I can see. Can, I mean, he's not, he, it's not that we can't. It's not that the Chargers can ignore him. I mean, obviously, guys, I'm coming. But I'm not putting. You know, listen, if I'm the Chargers, I'm not James on Robert Gronkowski. I'm not. That's not my focus. I mean, if, if, if Arizona or play setups like involve him going your area, then okay, fine. But like, I'm not having him keying in on Robert Gronkowski. Hmm. Rob Gronkowski is not a focus for me if I'm a Charger. I am focused on Julian Edelman. Well, Bobby did say Edelman. Bob, what do you think about this? Well, I think that <clears throat> they're going to. Anthony Lynn, I think, is going to have a close eye on Gronk because he knows that Gronk could, can strike at any time. But he's going to really have his hands full with Julian Edelman. I think they're really focusing on stopping Edelman. But then I think the Patriots know this. I think Bill Belichick knows that. And they're going to have a game plan, and I think they're going to have to run the football. I think Sony Michelle is key for win, for the Patriots to win this game. I think they really need him. He look this year he he and he missed three games, I believe, and he almost had a thousand yards rushing. I think he's, yeah, he has really people. Uh, some people are a little shaky on Sony Michelle. I've always I'm not been, either. I've always been a fan of Sony. He's going to be good in the future, but I I don't believe in him right now. Listen, I'm not I'm not an anti Sony Michelle person. I, I think that Sony will find his way in the future, but I don't find him as an intimidating threat. Well, he is. Yeah. Don't worry about James White than anyone else. You know what? You know what? You make a good know. point. Honestly, I mean, look at let's break this down. I'll break down the numbers. I have both their stats here. So. Michelle had 931 yards, like Bobby said, just short of 1,000, and he had six touchdowns, so he's a great run in the football, but he doesn't catch the ball at all in the backfield. That's non-existent. He is no threat in the passing game, Michelle. No, I understand that, and I agree. It's going to be James White and Brett. I Burnett. know. I'm going to break, and White has caught 87 balls, 750 yards, seven TDs, and he's ran for 425 and five touchdowns, so I think you guys are both right. White is a bigger factor than Sony Michelle in this game. That's 100% true. So if, you're, if you're a smart defense and you see those players on the field, you know you're telegraphing. Oh, you're saying like if James White comes on the field as opposed to Michelle, like you know what's going to happen basically? Is that what you were implying? You, you, it's not a guarantee when you know James White can run the ball, Tony Michelle can catch the ball, but you know... You know, you've got biases. You've got, you've got thought process. You, know, you, you expect a certain thing. And, you know, it is very Bill Belichickian to do otherwise at right. the last second. Yeah, like maybe problem. he'll throw some two running back sets out there, try to get some confusion, have them both out there at the same time. I'm but, sure but, he'll but, have some but people. But, but, but for me, if I'm Anthony Lynn and I'm the Chargers, if I can force the Patriots to beat me by the run, good. Yeah, I I 100% agree. So you break. I'm breaking the Chargers defense. They rank eighth in the NFL, a very good defense, and they're ninth in the run with 106 and ninth in passing, 228. So the, the big question though is how is Melvin Gordon's health? Right, that's the thing. You and if he is not healthy, Austin Eckler is going to have to be huge. Eckler is going to have to be the MVP. No, he Austin Eckler is going to have a have a role. But this is a Justin Jackson game if Melvin Gordon's at her. Really? You think Jackson's hurt. bigger than yeah. you think you think Jackson's bigger than Eckler if Gordon's injured? He should be. Hmm. I don't know if he will be, but I think he should be. Well, like you said, Anthony Wynn has done a great job keeping all the backs in this rotation. Like they're all relevant. Like it seems like it's almost a plug and play sometimes because that's how good the offenses look for the Chargers. Eckler Eckler 
in space is fantastic. I agree. But I'm not going to, you're never going to fucking, you're never going to freaking bang Austin Eckler. You need to bang someone. You, you need to have a threat of a run. You need to be able to make the middle of the field a threat. And that's Justin Jackson. And Justin Jackson can catch. Right. Well, Eckler catches the I'm ball, not too. Fa- I'm not, you never phase out Austin Eckler because he is great with the ball in his hands. But if, if Melvin Gordon's hurt, I'm going to be making with, with whatever remaining carries and after there with the minus uh, Melvin Gordon's, you know, I'm going to make it a 75-25. I'm going to Justin Jackson 75% of those remaining snaps, 25% to... Austin Hmm, interesting. Austin interesting. Austin give him a screen and he can take it to house. But you're not going to give it to him 15 times and expect him to take it to the house the 14 times. Okay, that's a fair point. So here's my thing. I think the Chargers get it done because Melvin Ingram, and I think both are going to get in Brady's face. I think they're going to have, have a hard time blocking those two. I think they're also going to be coming up the middle at times, and that's a big thing. If the Chargers get pressure up the middle, um, Tom Brady, they can get this win. And I think they're going to grind it out, and they're going to get it done. I'm going to say 21-20, Chargers shock the Patriots in Foxborough. Well, I will tell you this. To counter the Melvin Ingram and Joey Bosa, what are they going to do? What's the game plan? And I'll tell you what the game plan is. It's short passes, quick out of your hands. So expect a lot of screens. So expect a lot of Tom Brady's his first read. He will get the ball out quick, and you know he could do that. Yeah, I do. You're right. But I will tell you this. I think the Patriots, they will struggle a little bit in this game, but they will make adjustments as they always do, and they will find a way. And I'm going to tell you this. I think... Patriots are going to win 34-20. to 20. Oh, wow. I think you have a the, high scoring. I, I think in the second half, you're going to see you're going to see Stephon Gilmore, who's first team All-Pro, by the way, and I'm sorry to sound biased, but I'm going to. I think he's a top corner in the NFL. He's proven it. I think that he is going to take care of Keenan Allen. Unless he's playing against Tyree Kill. I'm sorry? I said unless he's playing against Tyree Kill. Wow. Oh, well, 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 not. <laughs> I mean, Keenan listen, Allen's a pretty good receiver. Uh, uh, listen, Benjamin, when, though, uh, listen. the Carters, and would it not be inconceivable for uh, Travis Benjamin to blow past Gilmore just like Tyreek I could see them taking some team shots with Benjamin. I, I, I Hopefully they hit a couple. They're definitely going to try to stretch the field. But I think Keenan Allen's big, too. That might be the most critical matchup, actually. Keenan Allen versus Stephon Gilmore. That's going to be a big-time uh, matchup. I, 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 could, I could see Gilmore hanging out with, with Allen. Yeah, I could, too. I, I, don't, I don't have the stats in front of me, but like, has Allen had a monster game of late? Well, I haven't really. Yeah, I don't really have his game logs. I know he had a good season, but I could try to check really quick. But I'm not. I know against Baltimore he was quiet, and I think at the end, I think I don't know. I gotta see when the last time he had a good game. It's gonna take a bit. Let's see. I don't know. I, I, listen, <laughs> I'm just saying that I think the Chargers are gonna win, but I think that the Chargers are gonna win in an unconventional manner. I think that the, the players are gonna score or at least put the Chargers in scoring position for Melvin Gordon to finish the job. I think there's going to be some, you know, the Tyrell Williams, the Travis Benjamins, uh, Mike Williams, who I love a lot. I don't know how much I like Mike Williams as a matchup, but I like him long term. Yeah, Mike Will's cool. I, I like him too. I, I'm, I'm sure, I'm not, maybe he'll get yeah, a touchdown got, down there. They got a lot of weapons. They do. You're right. They really do. It's a big time test for the Chargers, but they do have a lot of guys to get that ball to. So it's going to be really interesting to see. And, you know, Keenan Allen got injured week 15. I'm not sure if he's... Really... He's fine. He's fine, though. Yeah, he's battled through injuries before. You're right. So... Listen, man, that guy came back from, like, a fucking... A, a freaking split spleen or split kidney and <laughs> torn ACL. He's yeah, he's been, been through it all, one, but... Uh, so... That's one tough man right there. Yeah, Keenan he Allen. is. He, I, I think Keenan Allen is one of the best route runners in the league. But at the same time, like... I, I don't think he's going to be the factor in this game. 
Yeah, so I think it's about that running game with Melvin Gordon, like you said. If Gordon's healthy, we'll be fine. If he's not, then it's going to be a little bit of an issue. And I was able to check Allen's last great game, per se. Not even that, but pretty good, I guess. He had five catches for 78 yards and a touchdown against the Bengals, like week 14 or 15. So, 14, yeah. So, I hope Allen wakes up, and that will be good for the Chargers. But, like you said, he's not everything. So, you're going with Pats or Chargers here? I'm going Chargers. Oh, so you went back. Oh, so you came back to Chargers. So you went to Chargers. You started with. <laughs> I, 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 oh, okay, I, okay. All right. That's cool. Let's ride with Chargers. I might, I, might, I, might, I might hype myself back and switch. Okay, so I'm let's. Gonna, I might switch. Okay, so we're going to go to the next game and the last game. And now, here we go with the Eagles again. How is this team still playing? Uh, yeah. I'm not really sure. This team seems to find a way from the dead. Every single, you can't get these guys out. They're the biggest underdog of the week, because why wouldn't they be? They're an eight-point underdog in the Dome. And Saints are 13-3, and Eagles are 10-7. and And the Eagles are 4-4 four and four on the road spreads. And the Saints are four and four on their road spreads. I'm their home spread. There's one, there's one. There's one important factor that we need to include, though. Go in. What is it? The score between when the last two played. Oh, oh, right, right, right. Okay, yes. So the Saints embarrassed the Eagles, and they humiliated them. They undressed them on national television for four quarters, and they beat them by 41 points. And that was when Carson Wentz was still playing. And ever since that time, things have been different for the Eagles. And now, I bring up a comparison that's going to irk Bobby. So, the last time a team lost by that much, and they came back to beat the team in the playoffs, my New York Jets against the New England Patriots, they lost 45-3. to Then they marched into Foxborough and avenged that loss and went to the AFC Championship game. Could we see that again? I think it's unlikely, but... I know you don't want it to happen. I don't think Bobby thinks it'll happen. So, what do you guys feel for this game? Let me know. Bobby, you want to start? Well, yeah, I'll start. So, well, what I'm going to say to this is um, I will say that this game is something to look forward to. I think that, you know, Nick Foles really got them into position. I think the Eagles defense last week really showed, you know, even with a banged up secondary depleted as it is, they still can compete at a high level. I think, but I'm going to be honest with you, I really don't think it's enough. I think <laughs> Ma- Nick Foles' little magic he's got going on is going to come to an abrupt end against the Saints. I think the Saints defense is, defensive line is going to eat up the Eagles offensive line. I think Cameron Jordan's going to get to him a few times. They're going to force him to throw into trip quadruple coverage again just like he did last week got picked <clears throat> I picked off a few times I could see that happening again and I think Marshawn Lattimore is going to have a big game cover he's going to have to cover Alshon Jeffrey and they're really going the Saints defense is going to have their hands full especially with Zach Ertz you got to cover him but I think that the Eagles are really in for a rude awakening because that two-headed monster at running back they got with Kamara and Ingram is really going to make the Eagles' defense lose sleep. And all in all, I think that Drew Brees is going to get it done. I think this team is just too good. I'm picking the Saints to go to the Super Bowl. I think that they are just way too good. They're home. They are they're playing great football. Yes, Drew Brees has had some questionable games this year, you know, he started out hot. There's a few games he really hasn't played well, but I think you can lean on Mar- um, Mark Ingram and Kamara. If the pass is not working, I think you could give them the ball and they will make something happen. So I'm going to go with the Saints. I'm going to go with – they're going to drop a 40 bomb on the Eagles. Again, wow. And I think – Back that, to back, 40 and, bombs. Uh, 40 bomb, <laughs> and I think that, that Nick Foles – We'll score some. I'm going to go 40-21 Saints. That's a beat down. Bobby, God, I hope that's what happens. I pray that's what happens. What do you think, Bobby? So what do you think? I feel you're going to change up. You're not going to follow his sentiment, I feel like. I think it's going to be close as hell. I think that that Eagles D-line is mean. Yes, their D-line is nice. that That Eagles... D line terrifies me. It is and nasty. It's, it's a matter of uh, run game wise. I don't think that Kamara or Ingram combined 
will come close to 100 yards. Whoa. That's a pretty side point take, but I'll Rock back it. you up because the Eagles Rock. are seventh against the run. They only give up 97 a game, so if that holds true, they would be under 100. So. Oh, sweet. Well, that makes me feel a little bit better about that prediction. I don't think that the two of them will run well. Now, that being said, I could absolutely see a few freak screenplays to Kamara. My boy that is covered in freaking grease. <laughs> I could um, see some stream plays to Kamara where he's able to like break some stuff and, and make a big run. You know, that could be a game changer. But I think it's going to be close. What, what, what is this spread? Uh, it's an eight-point spread for the Saints, the uh, biggest one of the weekend. Yeah, no. Uh, give, give me this. Uh, you, know, you know what the sad thing is? Is that... Uh, the last time these two teams played, I think their spread was eight and a half or seven and a half, or whatever. I said, oh, a full touchdown? Huh, no way. I'm taking the Eagles to cover. Now, that wound up being horrifically wrong. I actually so. did the same exact thing, so don't feel so bad. I thought the yeah, Eagles was going to cover, I, too. When, when, you, when, you, when you see a team that gets a seven-plus spread, you, 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 know, you think... What, yeah, what, there were also they, some trends what, what that made me... What are they seeing that I'm not seeing? Yeah, there were also some trends that made me believe the Eagles were going to cover, but that wasn't the case. But the issue for the Eagles is still... I, 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 I don't... I, I hate the Eagles. There's only one team that I hate more than the Eagles, and that's the Pittsburgh Steelers. You just don't like those... P- you don't like those PA teams, I guess. But hey, that's, that's just coming from a Jaguars fan. Uh, us and the Steelers, uh, we, we go back a little bit. Yeah. So. But uh, I, I mean, I will take the Saints, but I think it's gonna be a grudge match. I'm kind of with you in that sense. I think the Eagles cover as well. I don't think they're gonna get the win, but I think they keep it close. I think that. It's going to be a one-possession game for most of it, in my opinion. The issue for the Eagles is that secondary still. I point it out every week, and they're 30th in the but NFL. One person. But sorry to, sorry to interrupt you, uh, JCJ. It, it, I'm sorry. Um, but there's only one person you really got to cover. And I am a huge Traquan Smith fan. And I'm, I'm an Orlando boy. I love my I love Traquan. I love my UCF guys. But he ain't showing it. Consistently enough, um, I, I get Ted Ginn's back, but Ted Ginn is, you know, what is what has he shown in the time he's back? Yeah, I get what you're you saying. Know, I feel that. Or like, I, I'm sorry, like, like, if the Eagles, and that, this is a big if, but if the Eagles are able to double or somehow figure out covering Mike Thomas, they're going to force the uh, Saints to either pass to Camara or pass to a bunch of undrafted free agents or Traquan Smith, who I, I hope has a great game, but I, I'm not anticipating it. Yeah. I, I, I think that they will be able to hang out. I, I think the Saints defense is fantastic. But it, it's going to be close. I think it's going to be close. Yeah, man, the Saints defense is second against the run, so the Eagles won't be running the ball. They actually run it horribly, so I don't even think that's that big of an no, issue. No, no, I mean, it, it, I mean what, what were they going to run? Wendell Smallwood and... and Josh Adams, I mean, yeah. Running. They're not going to run the ball. It's going to come down to Foles, Jeffrey, Ertz, Tate, even Dallas Scholar, maybe. No, we, so, can, um, we, can, we reel, can we reel it back to last week when, before the Golden Tate touchdown, when they had first down and goal... And they ran to Sproles, what was it, two or three times? Yeah, my dad was, said that was so puzzling. They did a draw the Sproles up the middle. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, you don't run Sproles up the middle. Like, you have to run him outside if you're going to run him. And, and, and not to knock Darren Sproles, who's one of the most electric players ever. But that's a man that works in space. You don't give that man the ball. The that made me question the Eagles' play calling so much. Yeah. It's hard to it's hard to question the play calling of a, of a team that just won the Super Bowl the previous year. But at the same time, like, like how? How, with the game of the line, do you give the ball to him instead of, you know, a uh, small winner, Josh Adams? Personally, Josh Adams, if I move. But, uh, yeah. So, so we'll see how they, they run it, you know. But I, I think it's going to have to be... Uh, for the Eagles to win, the defense is going to need to make some turnovers. They're going to need to shut down Mike Thomas. 
I don't think they can do it well enough to win the game. I think they can do it well enough to keep it close. So give me the Saints to win, Eagles to cover. I agree with that. The over-under is 51, so I'm going to say that goes over as well. Yeah, give me the over. I think that... Well, I'm going to say Saints get this done. Let's go in the neighborhood of 34 to... Hmm. You know what? 34-27. So the Eagles just Baba, cover. Baba, Baba, what do you think about the score? What do you, what do you think about that? And then what do you think about the over-under? <clears throat> well, he blasted gonna, the over based on I'm his earlier score. Over. I'm going to go with the over on that one. Yeah, I think we're all going over with that. So, all right, over 51. Let's do it. So, yeah, I think we're just about wrapped up with this. I think we, like by the over. I think we basically covered all the games. I think uh, that we're about set. I'm just going to do a recap quickly because I know people like the spread picks. So, let's recap it. First game, I say Colts cover, Chiefs win. Second game, I went Cowboys cover and win. Third game, we I said Chargers cover and win. And then fourth, I say Saints win, Eagles cover. That's what, That's what I have. Alright. So, uh, what you got? Uh, oh boy. I usually let's see, so um for the first game I uh what did I say? I said the uh um, You had Colts winning. I had Colts you winning. You guys both did. I had Colts winning and they they do cover. Yeah, they will cover, they yeah. They will cover, yeah. I, the second game I got the Rams winning and what's the spread on seven that? points. You seven. think they'll get that? So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Okay. They'll, they'll get that. Uh, Obviously, they're going with your guys. Yeah, I'm the third going with one. my guys. And no, and but uh, do I think the Chargers will cover? Uh, yes, I do. Interesting. And with the last game, I'm going with the Saints, and will they, will they cover? Yeah. Yeah, you said they would. So, Steve, you want to do your last ones before we head off? Yeah, so, I, so I had Indy winning. I don't know what the spread well, was. Well, they would cover because the Chiefs were the favorite. So if they, Indy wins, they cover. Perfect. Then there you have it. Uh, game two, Dallas Rams. I had Dallas winning. Same so scenario. Uh, give me a sec. So game three was Chargers. New England. Is New England favorite? They're four points favorite. Uh, I shifted mid video. <laughs> yeah. Uh, God. Uh, this, one, this one hurts me. Give me New England. I gotta take New England. Okay. And then. Uh, give, me New England, give me New England to cover. Okay. And then I know the last one you we you had Eagles covering. I had Saints winning. I, 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 had Saint, I had Saints winning, Eagles covering. Okay, so that's all we got time for today. Everyone, thanks for tuning I'm, in. I'm Steven, Steve, so, thanks for coming on. Yes, we appreciate you having you. Me, you offer some good insight. We'll be back next week for the, for the conference championship. So things will be wrapped up next week. So until right, next so time. Until next time. Talk to you, boys. See you later, bro. Peace.